Democrat James Thompson, one of the winners last night, claiming victory in his Kansas primary after a boost from Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Thompson, however, faring better than many candidates backed by the progressive duo, with several others losing their races last night. I'm joined now by Meredith Kelly. She's communications director for the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. And Matt Gorman, communications director for the National Republican Congressional Committee. Great to have you on again. Uh, Meredith, let me start with you. Um, we'll get to Ohio 12 in a moment, but overall, your feelings about last night. Thanks for having me, Dana. Overall, last night was a very exciting night for Democrats and our prospects for winning back the House in November. I couldn't be more confident that we will do so. Uh, candidates that fit their districts from Washington to Kansas to Michigan uh, be, were the nominees last night. And they're talk that's because they're talking to voters about lowering the cost of health care, increasing wages, and protecting Medicare and Social Security. And those are messages that really cut across all party lines and that will carry them to victory in November. Matt, um, of course, Ohio 12 was the one that people were really keeping an eye on. President Trump went there on Saturday of last weekend. Do you think that that made the difference in getting this race as close as it is right now? It's still too close to call. But how do you feel about that race and how it will turn out? Well, we believe that Troy Balderson has won and we congratulate him on his victory tonight. Or to last night, he ran a very strong campaign. And you mentioned President Trump. I think it was a team effort, absolutely. President Trump, Vice President Pence, Governor Kasich, the NRCC, and others all pitched in to help. Clearly, voters were energized. And, you know, we are in the business of winning seats, period. We've won eight of nine special elections this cycle, more than we have in our organization's history. So I'll congratulate Meredith and DCCC <laughs> on yet another moral victory. Unfortunately, they don't get votes in Congress, and I just hear a lot of big talk from Democrats, but I yet to see any, see any real results. Yeah, I, I'm, Meredith, respond to that, because I'm curious of how you answer it. I, obviously, it's evident that the Democrats have done better. The turnout, uh, the Washington Post saying that there's a surge of it. By the end of June, 13.6 million votes have been cast in Democratic primaries compared with 10.4 million in Republican primaries. So since 2014, the last midterm year, Republican turnout had grown by 24 percent, but Democratic turnout had surged by 84 percent, and that trend appeared to continue on Tuesday in Kansas and Michigan. But to Matt's point, um, if they can point, if the Republicans can point to winning eight of nine of these special elections, how do you respond to the Democrats' chances then? You think that you're confident of taking back the House in November, but do the results show that as a sure thing? Sure. I have three main reasons that Matt and Republicans should be very fearful of losing control of the House in November. First of all, there are at least 80 districts that are more competitive for Democrats than Ohio 12. That is a reliable Republican district that they've had for decades. Trump won it by 11 points. So for us to still be counting votes is a very ominous sign for the rest of the more competitive battlefield. Second, right. Matt, Matt nailed it himself. It was a big Republican team effort, one where they had to pull out all the stops for surrogates and money. And that is just not a sustainable strategy in all of the districts that they are on defense in in November. And third, Republicans clearly have no message. They scattered around finding different boogeymen in every different television ad. And that's just not something you do when you have a personal message that is connecting with voters. And meanwhile, Democrats have a replicable strategy and candidate resources to, to execute in November. And of course, we will be paying attention to that. I do want to read to you, Matt, a statement from Corey Bliss. Um, you know, he is at the Congressional Leadership Fund, and he said, while we won tonight, this remains a very tough political environment, and moving forward, any Republican running for Congress getting vastly outraised by an opponent needs to start raising more money. But your boss, Congressman Steve Stivers, who's the chairman of the NRCC this year, he's been saying this for, well, since this show began last October, are Republicans not heeding his warning? Well, absolutely. This is something Congressman Stivers has been on for a while. And he says, money's like horseshoes and hand grenades. You don't need to have the most, but you need to be close. You need to have uh, enough to get your message out and also define your opponent. So look at Ohio 12, for instance. Uh, we were able to define Danny O'Connor as someone who would flip-flop on his support for Nancy Pelosi and who couldn't be trusted to lower energy taxes, but also would repeal the middle-class tax cuts that even Nancy Pelosi says are growing the economy. On the other hand, we were able to talk about how Troy Balderson is a record of accomplishment in the state Senate. And in Georgia 6, the special election But what about year, the money part of things and the but, fundraising? Yes. I mean, are the Republicans well, at a deficit here? Well, look, look at Georgia 6 special election. Karen Handel was outraised 4 to 1 yeah. uh, in last year's special election, but she had enough to get her message out 
and define John Ossoff. So mm -hmm. again, it's important about having not having the most, but having enough. All right. Well, we'll see if enough is enough. Uh, I can never get enough of you two, Meredith Kelly and Matt Gorman. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks Tina. <laughs>